So on to the theories. This investigation has literally gone on for decades. Uh, the SFPD actually closed the case at some point in the early 2000s and then reopened it a few years later. Um, there has been over 2,500 people that have been looked at and, and released or uh, passed up as suspects for this, but a few names in particular that keep coming up. Um, one of them that was a focus for a long time is Arthur Lee Allen. And Arthur Lee Allen, um, there's footage of him talking directly about this case. He insists that he was not involved. One of the things about the Zodiac that was noted from the survivors is that he seemed to be a bit heavy set. Um, they said that it looked like he was between 5'8 and 5'9, probably weighed about 225 pounds or so, so he had a little bit of weight on him. Um, Arthur Lee Allen definitely fits that physically, um, but they did do some DNA testing basically from the the way that people would send letters back in the late 60s. They weren't thinking of DNA back then, so we're assuming that the Zodiac Killer probably licked his own envelopes, licked his own stamps, and they have done some DNA extraction from those materials. They don't have a full profile, but they do have a partial DNA profile. Um, however, getting access to that information seems to be a bit bumpy. I've seen at least two instances where people have found some type of DNA uh, results that they wanted to compare with that DNA profile, and the SFPD would essentially not allow it to happen. So both of those people wound up sending their materials into the SFPD, and I don't know if any results ever came out of that. Um, there does seem to be a little bit of, not a conspiracy, but kind of a locking up of information around this case that's happening within the SFPD, and some people are saying that this is a bit of a rivalry between these different police departments that are all involved and that they're not essentially being very helpful to each other. In one of the cases I read about, it was an FBI agent that was actually assisting with some of this new DNA analysis and he couldn't even get the SFPD to release their DNA sample. What I find curious about this is I don't think people necessarily need the DNA sample from the SFPD. The SFPD just needs to process it, get the DNA profile, which is just information, and they should be able to share that with other agencies, and I'm not positive if that happened. Um, apparently now there is something called touch DNA, which I've just heard of as a result of this case, and some people want the SFPD to process the bindings that were found um, when he tied up some of his victims because that could have some of his DNA transferred on there. I don't know if that's ever happened, but apparently it has been requested of them. So Arthur Lee Allen did have DNA profile submitted. They did test him against the DNA profile that they had from their letters, apparently at the SFPD, and he has been ruled out. So supposedly at least He's not the one that licked the letters, and I really doubt that the Zodiac Killer was having someone else, hey, lick this, you know, this letter I'm about to send in to the police department. It just sounds very odd to me. So I believe he has been ruled out. The Zodiac Killer website, as of recent, is really, um, they've even done a, it's a pretty good documentary, I'll include it in the links below, about Richard Gajkowski. And there are a couple things about him that tie in very neatly with looking at him as a suspect. Um, one of the things that the Zodiac Killers did was with his letters, he would send in these kind of cipher messages, these coded messages, and only one of those messages has been figured out. Um, in one of the coding messages, he insists that his identity is in that cipher. And in the actual coded message, right smack in the middle of it, is the word Geik, which was kind of a nickname of Richard Geikowski. It's spelled a little bit differently. It's G-Y-K-E in the coded message, although Richard Geikowski was known to spell Geik at least two different ways in his personal life, G-I-K-E and G-A-I-K, which is closer to his actual last name. Uh, unfortunately, he is now deceased. And that seems to be a bit of a pattern that's coming up with recent suspects. I mean, if 
The killer was 30 years old back in 1970. We're now looking at him approaching 75 years of age. The likelihood that he's still alive is becoming less and less every year. So there is also a flip side to that that kind of irks me just a little bit. I've, I've dived into three or four of these suspects that are pre pretty heavily railed on. I mean, we're talking books being written about these guys, significant media being drawn to them and the possibility of them being the Zodiac Killer. And there's many instances of this. I mean, uh, off, just off the research I did today, there's at least half a dozen. If one of those people is right, that still means that five of them are wrong, and these guys are having accusations thrown at them. Now, like I said, several of these supposed suspects are already deceased. But there's something that kind of bugs me about that, too. Um, it just seems a little reckless, and it seems like people are really trying to sell books around this case. And it's unfortunate that they might be muddying up the names of people that can't really defend themselves properly. Um, just kind of bothered by that a little bit. Regardless, um, check out the documentary below if you're interested in seeing why Richard Gajkowski is a potential suspect in this case, and there is a full write-up at ZodiacKiller.com about a lot of other elements that tie it together. Um, he, there's a friend of his that specifically states that he was not in the San Francisco Bay Area around the time of these murders. He was actually in Albany, New York. Um, which I would think would rule him out, but I don't see that information pop up anywhere else, and it could be that his friend is mistaken about the years. I mean, we're talking 40 years later now that he's trying to recall this, so I'm really not positive. We already talked about Arthur Allen, and then there's Jack Terrence, and this, this is a great example of a new trend that seems to be popping up around this case. Jack Terrence has a stepson, and supposedly Jack Terrence found out that he was dying, and he decided to come out with the truth that he's the Zodiac Killer to his stepson. And now his stepson has been trying to get attention and get people to look into this case and try to um, figure out if... It, well, he insists that it is Jack Terrence. That seems to be happening time and time again. Now we have people that are approaching their deathbeds, and many people are saying that they were the Zodiac Killer. Um, I'm not necessarily sure why this is occurring. I don't know if people are just looking to have some reason of feeling important before they face the end of their life, and this is a big cultural icon in their mindset that they're trying to associate themselves to, but I've seen several stories with several different names where the children of the Zodiac Killer are coming out and saying, it was my dad, it was my dad, it was my dad. Um, I really, I, you know, all these things should be looked at individually, but a lot of these feel kind of flimsy. And I did find an interesting note from an investigator in one of the documentaries that I watched about how good investigative work doesn't start with a person, because once you lock in your thoughts on that person, you're going to see what you want to see. You're essentially going to find information around it that supports your theory it really starts with the evidence, and the evidence should lead to the person. And in this case, it's tough because the Zodiac gave plenty of written evidence, gave some form of DNA evidence that we can find. Um, they did collect palm prints, and I believe they even said wet fingerprints um, from the first, or actually the second crime that he committed. He actually called the police department and spoke to someone on the phone and admitted to what he did. And uh, apparently they found that phone and they were able to get thumbprints off of that. None of these prints have ever matched up to anybody. That's another thing that actually helped rule out um, Mr. Arthur Lee Allen was they did a palm print assessment based off the letters that the Zodiac Killer wrote because when you write you typically have your palm print down so they have good big palm print um, information on him and it didn't match Mr. Um, Arthur Lee Allen. So, but there was someone that spoke to him. Now, apparently there are no recordings of those 911 calls back in those days, but one of the people that worked the switchboard, she is still alive. And she actually listened to tape of Richard Gajkowski 
And this is in that inter, in the um, documentary down below, specifically about Richard Gajkowski. And she says that that sounds to her like the same voice that she heard on the phone 40 years ago. So take that for what you will. You know, this is something, I don't know how good a memory is 40 years later. I've also heard snippets of voices from other suspects here that I think are very close in tone to Richard Gajkowski. I don't know if they're close in tone to the Zodiac Killer, but I think that any normal person would have trouble determining if it was Richard Gajkowski or the other suspects that I'm talking about. So it's, it's really difficult, very hard to uh, get my head around. So that's kind of where it's gone. There are no recent leads that I can really find. I did find some information from 2014, February 24th, 2014, and essentially here we have another friend who confessed to someone on his deathbed that, hey, I'm really the Zodiac Killer, and I can tell you how to prove it. Um, look at one of the messages I sent, and I was trying to tell them that I was a teenager at the time that I was killing people. It's How do you substantiate this? I have no idea. I would believe, with how gutsy and how ballsy the Zodiac Killer was in terms of reaching out and sending all this information and contact, that if he wanted to really prove who he was, he would produce some hard evidence like the hood. Um, and it's funny I mention that because there is one instance where someone found a hood, but it doesn't quite match the description. It sounds to me like it was possibly a knockoff that was made, once again, to sell one of these stories, potentially sell some books. Um, but I can't say that for certain. So, let's get to my theory, shall we? 